Um, I want to uh, talk about the like just like the very idea of marketing as a as a dirty word. <laughs> um, so oh yeah, we, yeah. So, so that we can clean it up a little bit. Um, it's uh, related terms like networking and promotion and things like that. They they kind of get a, a bad rap, especially with artists. You know, when you know a lot of artists kind of like internalize this notion that like you know, art should be pure and you know it's it's it, it's like inherently anti capitalistic and it, it, all of that. Like, but it it essentially boils down to feeling disingenuous. Um, like you're somehow like trying to trick people, you know, or like lying to them or whatever. Uh, what what can artists or other creatives, any any creative, um, do? to help themselves think about marketing in a healthier way. Yeah, it's easy. Give people value. Like that's the best marketing. Um, mm -hmm. Like making, nobody cares about your website ads. Um, so the average person sees 5,000 ads a day. Nobody cares about, uh, about ads. And actually think about your, okay, what is like the best advertisement you've ever seen? I probably didn't know that it was advertising. <laughs> That's my exactly. cheeky answer. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that was, you got my trick question. Okay. Like the best advertising <laughs> isn't advertising. The uh -huh. best kind of the and it's that so like the best kind of marketing isn't advertising. It's giving you value. Uh, and so focus focus on that. Um, focus on like what are things that people that people will find value in. That's actually. That's what led to the rise in content marketing, which is a now a bit of a dirty word. But back in the day, you know, when like corporations started having blogs, it was because people realized, like, you know, your local plumber, how are they going to stand above every other plumber in the area? Well, they can start putting out tips for like, you know, things that you can do to check out your your own bathroom um, and, you know, things that you can do at home. And suddenly then they're getting more traffic. They're getting more eyeballs in their content. And then they're more trusted because they're giving value to um, to customers. So um, focus on gi giving people value first, and that I think that's also how you feel better too, because you're you're like you're giving that that value to people. Um, the tough part is, like especially in art, how do you give value without giving away your actual stuff that you want people to buy from you? Right. Yeah. Um, so like, I think it's similar to. Actually, going back to the, the plumber analogy, like you're going to read all this content from this plumber, but you're not going to get them to come out to your house to make to like fix your toilet for free. So they're giving you information. And I think like as an artist, you can still kind of, you know, inform and, and critique and have conversations online without like, I don't think you ever should go down the, the route of like, I'm going to do free commissions for people. Um, I think it's more informing and I think another thing that I, I've previously talked about is you could um, to help build up some um, some sort of following for yourself. Um, you know, you you could look at just like what you love to make art wise uh, that resonates with pop culture. And sometimes uh, like uh, media outlets are starting to pick up really cool art. Like I know every few weeks I see a new media outlet picking up somebody who's made uh, hyper realistic 3D renders of uh, Pokemon, and they, and they look disgusting. Right? <laughs> but, but that that artist is kind of like getting getting themselves known. That's like a 3D artist who is trying to land a job in the gaming industry. So uh, it all goes back though to think about what value you can provide. Thanks for listening to this clip. You can see the full interview by clicking the link in the description, or you can click the thumbnail on the bottom left of this video. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Have a great day.